from Mr. Bills across campus from McNeese State University and on 92.9 The Lake. Drew Fitzgerald is our guest for the one brought to you by Mockler Beverage. The fourth segment is, Coach, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? All right. So it's not been the kind of year you wanted. Nope. Or, or expected. Um, what's going to happen? What's been the – I see it's been getting getting goals, it seems like, offensively. Yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, I think that's a, probably a pleasant way to describe it. We uh, – last year we statistically created very few chances and were incredibly efficient. This year we're actually creating plenty of chances, at least the last – not maybe the last game, four games prior, and just not just not finding the back of the net enough and then giving up sometimes silly things. Sometimes there have been some tough calls. Uh, you know, a couple PKs have changed the course of the game that have been, at, at the very least, difficult calls. But, uh, yeah, I think we've got to find a way to find the back of that net. We're creating we – we're out shooting some opponents, but more shots on goal than some opponents, but not putting it in. So you have three matches left home, correct? Yes. That's uh, right. The last one is Nichols and on uh, November first at seven p.m. and that is Senior Night. Yeah, that'll be our Senior Night. That's and right. you're gonna you're gonna um, honor se six seniors. Uh, but before that, you got Stephen F. A new school in Stephen F. Austin. They're also second place right now. Some people think they're the best team actually in the conference. They they're Saturday night or no? They're tomorrow right. night. They're tomorrow night. Tomorrow yeah, night Friday at night. seven p.m. Then Saturday it's HCU. Um, what does Stephen F. do that's so interesting, and what have they brought to the conference? Well, I think, I think there's a few things they do. One, one is they have a lot of seniors on the team playing on the field. So I think they've got as many as nine on the field at any given time. Obviously, that, that's nice to have. That's a luxury to have. Um, they play with a lot of force, and then their, their front six are very creative. Back four are strong and solid, but the front six are really creative and dynamic. So they're not, they're very offensive, aren't they? Yes, yeah. Um, is this a – you kind of switched in the middle of last year to a, to a more defensive. Is this going to be a, the biggest test this year? You know, I think Commerce has done a really nice job. We played Commerce last weekend. Um, and I think, I think between the two of them, yeah, it's a really tough test. But, you know, Commerce is up at the top of the conference for a reason too. So I don't, I don't want to undersell what they've been able to do. So this conference – how many teams make it to the tournament? Um, I think three of us are out and eight are in. And you're not one of the ones in. We're, we're going to be one of the three out, it looks like. Um, I think numerically we're out as of the results on Sunday. So what's it like now with the rest of the season to go without that? Because last year you were building towards that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's, it's uh, uncharted territory for me. We've been in every year except the uh, COVID and we had the hurricane. That year was a weird spring season. Yeah. Um, where the tournament was pared down. It was just a strange year to begin with. We've been in every year since then, so I've never really had this, especially this early. It's been interesting. I'll say the team has done a great job. Of, like We had a good practice tonight. Uh, they're still competing. They're still fighting. They still want to win games, so that's exciting. I mean, that, I think that's a winning a battle right there because it is tough when you're used to playing for championships or competing and, and having a shot at it to not be in. It's tough. Yeah, it's last year you are in the running right until the last weekend. Right, that's right. So, so it's, a, it's definitely a, a change of pace. Does this kind of make you look at younger players and see some things, or how do you go about it? Because you're still placed in the number two team. You want to you wanna give your best effort. Yeah, I think, I think it's a little bit of both, and we've had a lot of internal discussion, as you do, when things are going on. But we're going to try to get some of the younger players on where we can, certainly make an effort to do that. But like you said, we, we still want to win games. We don't want to end the season this way. We, we can find ways to win. We've been competitive in just about every match. You know, we just have to find a way to win, it, win a game and then maybe get a little momentum going into the next year or at least can feel a little better about the season. So I think that's kind of where we're at right now. And you want to give, you want to give the seniors something to, to yeah. walk off yeah, with. Yeah, I think they've done such a great job for us. Even this year they've done a good job. Uh, we just haven't gotten the results. So to give them, give them something positive to end on would be great. Okay, so what's, uh, what's this like against this new conference? Um, completely different with the two new teams and, and some of the additions. But also how it's kind of played out because now you have longer travel, different travel on the road more. What's the, what's the first year yeah, been like? It's been rough in uh, some ways. I think I think the number of teams is nice. I, th I think in the, when we get schedules that are out before July and can plan them a little better, we'll do better. You know, we've had some teams, some games we've played where teams had an extra night of rest over us. That's tough. Uh, it's a tough environment to go into. So the league's got to sort some of those things out. But I, I like what they've added. I think UTRGV is a good team. SFA is clearly very competitive. I think I think making the conference better is a good thing. We've just got to get back in the in the hunt. It, was it was it difficult to p kind of plan out the year when you have that? 
so later. <laughs> well, there wasn't planning. It was just <laughs> flying. But I said, look, we got, we got it in, what, late June was the schedule. Um, so, you know, at that point, you're trying to get ready for preseason because we start in late July, mm-hmm. and, and we got camps and stuff like that. So it really was just I, planning probably isn't the right word for at least the travel <laughs> portion of the season. It's just surviving. So what, what do you want to see in the last three, three home games at least? I want to – well, A, we've got to continue to co- compete. I think that's the biggest thing is, is we've got to show a bit of heart and character and go out and compete. I think if we do that, I'm okay. Not okay with the result, but, but I'll live with whatever happens. Um, but we've got to show that bit of character and commitment. And they've done a, our team's done a great job of that through the years. This is a new challenge for us. We haven't been in this position. And so, you know, sometimes it's a chance to build character and figure out who you are. So that's, that's how we're looking at it. So what can we learn from this? Yeah, and does it also expose what you still need to go out to when you recruit now? Yeah, I think that's, is it, is that's that the been evident, too. Like, when you're not finding the back of the net, it's pretty clear what you need. We need somebody to find the back of that net for us. Is, so, yeah. is, the, did you Have you liked the style of the change, or does this make you wonder maybe you should go back, or are you going to stay with it? No, I, I think I think the the change had to happen. Like, we actually played a few games playing the way we played last year, but when you're younger and you have different teams, I, I think uh, – I don't, I don't want to throw anybody at the bus. Freshmen can't do what the seniors did last yeah. year. I can't ask freshmen to sit there and absorb pressure for 90 minutes because it will crack. Um, so we've had to change, and I think in a lot of ways it's been positive. You know, like I said, we, we, last year you couldn't find an opponent we outshot. This year, the three of the last four we've outshot. We've outcornered. We've had those – or put shots on goal. Like, we've had those opportunities. So we've, we've created just enough. We haven't been great. I'm not pretending we've been great, but we've created enough. The, the results are almost – if you looked at just the stats, you'd say, oh, that's a team that's 500, you know. But you look at the record, obviously we're not there. So I think, I think it's okay. I think we have a chance to grow from it, and I think, I think the players we have will continue to get better. The freshmen have contributed a lot. It's just – in those crucial moments, <laughs> sometimes the brain shut down, and we've got to get through that. They, they are freshmen. I know. <laughs> sometimes uh, you forget it. You, uh, you have an interesting thing. You're going to face your former assistant coach. Yeah, Nick Whiting's coming over to play, so that's exciting. When do you see him? Uh, we'll see them on Sunday at 1. And Nick and I talk – well, we talk less now that he's in the conference. We <laughs> used to talk about every third day, so we talk still fairly frequently. He's a great guy. He's done a lot for this program. I'm excited for him to have the opportunity he has, and I'm excited to go play him. But it, it kind of a weird feeling when you play them? Or well, we just got to win. <laughs> <laughs> is, win. Is, is there bragging rights with that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> bragging rights. Now, both of us are pretty nice guys, so I'm not sure we'll rub it in each other's faces, but it'll always be there. <laughs> so we we got we to gotta have a result. So that, that, that's something you want your kids to get up for then at least. Yeah, I think they will. I think they'll be excited. <laughs> and um, when, you, when you look at this year in general, you had a lot of high hopes. Yeah. How yeah. do you flip that into an understanding of – what still needs to be done and not get lost in the fact that all the negative that you're now playing younger people that they've got to learn and you've got to take and you've got to test your patience. Yeah. I mean, I think the patience has certainly been tested all season. Um, I think, I think for us, it's taken that, that reflection time afterwards and, and really evaluating where we're at. Like I said, we, we look at the games afterwards. We look at some of the stats and think, okay, well, there's a lot we can do better. We have to do better, but also we're not that far. So we've just got to figure out a way to get, get a little bit better every day what, what are you going to take from the senior class as they leave well i just think they've given us so much you know uh, uh morgan schoolie came in with the hurricane and stuck around for an extra year for us uh casper has been amazing jackie kelly's been one of the greatest keepers this program's ever seen um you know so I, I just think they've given so much and we just have to have to find a way to celebrate that and be grateful that we've had that time with them and you want to give them a proper send absolutely absolutely we do we'd love to have people come out on uh on when we play Nichols that Friday evening and send them off. They've, they've given a lot to the community. They've given a lot to the program, and, and we definitely want to go out with a win. And they've been through a lot. They've, they've definitely been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Has any, obviously, no group's been through as much. No, no. I think uh, this is kind of the last of that group that went through the hurricanes and COVID and everything. So this is the graduating, the final graduation for that group. But, yeah, they've been through a lot. And, they've, like I said, they've given a lot to this program, this community. So we'd yeah. like people to come out and support them. And what about Jackie Kelly? What can uh, you say about her? Yeah, I mean, you can't say enough about her. E- even this year, I think she's, she's – this is not a great staff for us, but she's in the top ten in saves in the country. Um, she's done a great job. You know, I think I think I saw one mistake from her this year that cost us a goal. It's been one mistake in two and a half years that cost us. She's unreal. It's unreal what she's done for us. So, um, you know, we're excited. We're hoping maybe she can go on and play professionally at some level, trying to get her uh, to commit to doing that. So we're working on that now. And well, obviously that would mean a lot for your program. And 
Yeah, uh, you know, Brio Dell went and played pro last year. We're hoping Jackie can do the same. We got a few players that have some opportunities, so we're excited about that. Drew Fitzgerald's been our final guest here on the podcast. A couple of things to wrap up. They have three matches at home. Uh, Seven o'clock tomorrow night against Stephen F. Austin, who's number two in the conference and brand new to the conference or back in the conference. HCU on Sunday at 1 p.m. And then on fr a week from Friday, they will play Nichols in the senior night finale uh, of the home matches. So go out and support the six seniors that are leaving. Also, don't forget McNeese State basketball will be starting November 4th. They will play at South Dakota State. And that game can be watched here on a watch party at Mr. Bill's. Also the watch party for Nichols State on Saturday at 3 p.m. so you can watch the game here if you can't get over to Nichols. Well, thank you for coming this week, and we'll see you next week or in two weeks on the podcast.